Hi, and welcome to the Boca Voice. Today, we're continuing our series with growth in Boca Raton. Armand Grossman, a dear friend of mine and a longtime Boca resident who um, has come on to join us with this series. Thank you so much for joining us, Armand. Always a pleasure, Pete. Great. And today, we discussed that we're going to go over governance. So please, tell us how that plays a role in this First off, this upcoming election, because I think it's relevant, I think it's pertinent to what we're going over, but more importantly, the overall scope of city government. Well, as I mentioned to you in yesterday's uh, show when we shot, we talked about the fact that governance plays a huge role in, in the city. Leadership is everything. You have the right leadership in any organization. That organization is going to be an advance or it's going to fall back. I couldn't disagree. I couldn't agree more. And we've seen it all the time. We, we've seen it in uh, things such as football and coaching and so forth. Uh, the right coach uh, and the right quarterback, it's amazing what, what can happen yeah, uh, as a result of that. Well, that happens in the cities as well. And having served in, as a commissioner in Miami and uh, served on the, uh, the League of Cities, uh, it was interesting to see uh, the different uh, roles that the governor, that the, uh, the commissions played in their various cities. One of which that uh, uh, some good friends of mine, were the mayor and the council in the city of Coral Gables in Florida. Uh, Coral Gables is a beautiful city. They had the most restrictive deed restrictions of any city probably in the state of Florida. What happened to their property values? Their property values were continuously enhanced as a result of that. And it's a beautiful city and a beautiful place to live. A, a major ingredient to that is code enforcement, to have the right code enforcement. And the city being able to enforce that code and create a code whereby individuals live up to a responsibility and you have to end up with this beautiful community. Part of that also is growth and managing sure. the growth and traffic and so forth and all the things that go with that. We can be very proud to be in Florida. We've had a, a very good governor for the last eight years and a, a governor who believes in lower taxes. We have no personal tax, no state income tax. And as a result, people move to Florida because it has a very friendly environment. It's also a good place to open up a business. The result of that is, is interestingly enough, when there is less tax, there is greater spending. When there's greater spending, there's greater revenue that goes to the government. Yep. So as a result, we see the same thing happening in Washington today. In Washington today. We have an administration that wants to lower taxes, and as a result, revenues are increased. If you raise taxes, you take more people, more people, money away from the people. When you remove them, their spending power is diminished. They become more burdensome as a result as they become dependent on the state. So then somebody has to be taking care of that individual as well as themselves. <laughs> Obviously, I, I, I don't favor that form of government. I believe in giving everybody an opportunity to progress as highly as uh, to, the, to the height of what their, their highest achievement. More. And as a result, they become a productive member of society. And uh, of course, that is a great thing. In our local elections, in, in the municipality, who we elect is very, very important. So is growth an issue? Yeah, growth is, a, is certainly an issue. Now, I watched. Um, two nights ago, we were at the debate, mm -hmm. and um, I, I found it very interesting as you watched the debate, and you were there, I saw you there, um, uh, it seemed to be that the same group of people <coughs> came out and were very vocal on trying to get um, their voice heard. My biggest concern and I'm gonna, I can't emphasize this enough. My biggest concern is voter turnout mm -hmm. for a March election. Mm -hmm. If this were to be a November election, I don't think we'd have a conversation right now, okay? But in a, in a March election, right. when the loud minority dictate a mm -hmm. good portion of what is being um, said and what is not being said, we could be in a very unfortunate position where people don't realize the impact of what could happen if they don't come out and vote. Would you agree with that statement? No question about it. And of course, uh, uh, whenever there's a presidential election, that has, engenders a great deal of turnout. Uh, in the absence of that, people become more apathetic. And uh, actually, the municipal election probably impacts their lives at a greater level on a day-to-day -day basis. more. <laughs> when you look, you know, when your garbage is getting picked up, are the libraries open? Uh, how is our public safety a major issue in every municipality? Are, can we feel safe walking out in the streets at night? And uh, all of those are municipal functions. I don't honestly know if 
enough emphasis is put on a day-to-day -day basis of how our citizens, whether they take advantage or they just take advantage of day-to-day -day lives, not realizing the amount of effort that goes into the running of our city. Oh, no question. You know, you and I talked one, in one of our shows in the past, we talked about a property here in, in Boca Raton, the Wildflower yeah. property. Oh, my God. And uh, I think that is almost emblematic of which side you were on in that. And I've got friends on both sides, and good friends, people that I genuinely like who thought that should be a park. Right. I just don't understand that, and I don't get it. For the viewers who are not familiar with this, it's a price of property that the city bought in 2007 for the purpose of which they were going to lease and make a restaurant. Somehow that didn't happen. Then there was a referendum, and, and uh, the referendum was worded in such a way that I think people don't realize exactly what they and voted for. And you know what's for. funny? I don't really, I, and, and you've heard me say this, I did not care whether or not it was going to be a restaurant or a park. I was okay either way. My biggest issue with that was, number one, that the referendum was written by people that were not city employees or represented by the city. Mm -hmm. Number two, it was misleading by nature. Right. Number three, it was self-serving by nature. Okay? And number four, mm -hmm. that people didn't realize what they were voting for. Exactly. If your viewers are not familiar with it, it the, uh, the referendum was worded in such a way, do you want this to be a park where everybody can attend or would you like it to be a more restricted? And, and right. there was something along those lines. However, if the referendum, which actually should, could have been worded in such a way, would you like to uh, have a property where it can be employ 120 people, uh, that thousands of people can work use uh, every week as a restaurant, uh, and that will uh, produce about $33 million in tax revenue? Right. Or would you rather have your tax bill increase so a couple people can use it a week to go to this park? Right. How do you think that would have turned out? Right. Of course, and, and it was, it's very clear that we didn't need two more, two more acres of park with an additional 1,600 acres of park already in the city. The tax base is to, to pay for that service and to pay for that park and increase taxes so that so few people will ever use that park. Our parks are underutilized as it is. Uh, I think it's a very clear uh, uh, decision. And yet there were those who said, no, no, no. And so I would be very cautious as to who I elected and find out where they stood on that particular issue. Uh, I agree. And because that may be emblematic of their entire philosophy. Uh, I'm not sure it is, but I think it could be. No growth is not good. No. Okay. If we put ourselves in a position where we <clears throat> halt growth, we are going to go backwards. And things that don't grow, do what? You're either growing or you're dying. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to die. <laughs> well, it, it really is true. And when we talked in our last show about the amount of people that continue to move to Florida and the growth of Florida, which has been just staggering. I mean, it's just the amount of people that continue to come here, not only for the weather, but because of the economic environment, which was created by good governance at the state level that made this all happen. Not only happened in, in terms of the municipalities, but our educational system, our state universities, Sure. Some fabulous state universities as a result. Florida wasn't even on the map politically back in the, when I first moved here. Today, Florida is the, is the swing state and Palm Beach County. And that's before the hanging chat. <laughs> that was before the hanging chat, exactly. And now we have a winter White House in Palm Beach that's County. Right. Pretty cool. Hey, you actually got to go visit? I certainly did. I was on the, uh, the six people were invited to meet the president when he came in as a, for the first time as the president to, and welcome him to Palm Beach County. What a great honor. Oh, I got to tell you. And, and it's an honor to do that. But I, when that big bird came in, Air Force One, and you see that fly around and it finally lands and pulls up and you see United States of America on the side of that plane, it, it's response. awe inspiring. It really is. I'm sure. And then does. the president came over and said hello to everyone and, uh, in his, his own inimitable fashion. And uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of activity in Palm Beach County. I'm sure there is. And I think a lot of that's going to impact us, and I think in a very positive way. There's no question. Economically, it's a huge impact. Uh, the amount of services alone that, uh, that are derived from that. But it's not just that. It's, it's what's happening throughout the county. 
Atlantic Avenue and Delray is becoming the new Lincoln Road. Sure. The prices people are paying, the George Building at 4th Street, people paid $19 million for that building. Unbelievable. Over $1,200 a square foot for that building. And what, is, what, what causes that, that, that great value? The average home in Palm Beach County has doubled since the downturn. And yet I hear people tell me, Peter, I have people say to me, well, I really don't care about my home value. I, I, that's not important to me. Okay. I'll give you what you paid for it. Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, people do care. And when they say they don't care about money, they'll lie to you about other things. <laughs> sure. Uh, I can't disagree more. So prosperity is, is, is part of uh, the quality of life. And certainly Palm Beach County offers a great deal of opportunity, not only for people who live here, but people who continue to come here. So proper management of that growth is obviously essential. You know, yesterday we talked about your, um, your tour as on the Planning Commission. When you look at the Boca Raton Planning Commission, what do you think of the job that you're currently doing? It's difficult for me to assess them on that, on that particular level. I know that they, that the people work hard. I can say that the people at the, at, that I worked with was a panel of, of people who genuinely cared and offered diverse opinions. I don't think the votes ever went the same way, but they did their homework. And I will also say this, that at the county level, those people, the professional planners, Lorenzo and uh, his staff, second to none, mm -hmm. they were that good. They were that good. Interestingly, Lorenzo came to us from uh, the Keys. And, really? you know, the Keys is still, the population of the Keys is still the same as it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And the reason is they've had a no-growth policy in the Keys. Now, the reason for that is is because you don't see high-rise condos in the Keys. I say, why didn't they do that? Because of hurricane evacuation, it would be impossible. So that's another issue that has to be faced with the growth as, with growth as well. Right. Can we really evacuate in the event that? Though I, I must tell you, Peter, we're not going to have any more hurricanes, and I can tell you why. I bought a generator for my house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so once I was in and I bought the generator, that's it. No more From hurricanes. Your lips to God's ears. Yeah, no more, no more. From your lips to God's but ears. it is an important consideration. Evacuation, obviously, uh, to, to be able to leave the area is always an overriding. And the, and the next big issue is going to be water. So where do you see that going? Well, it's going to be a, uh, we obviously, proper management and the, and the levels of uh, the Lake Okeechobee was they drain and they, and, and they sure. retain and, and, the, and so forth, uh, and the amount of people that continue to come to Florida. We're going to be all right, but it has to be watched very carefully. I also see in the future major desalination, desalinization plants that sure. are going to have some. Walk me through a little bit about how you envision growth in Boca Raton. A statement was made um, yesterday or the day before yesterday at the traffic about traffic mm -hmm. okay uh, an off-the-cuff statement was made by one of the candidates which I thought was um, uh, a little bit typical of, the, of this particular candidate that said that it failed before it started about the off-ramp at um, Spanish mm -hmm. River mm -hmm. okay how they can make that statement without any facts for figures behind it. But Are you saying a politician is speaking without facts? Yes, yes, no, I am. Okay. okay. So once that goes in, okay, what do you think about traffic? And tell me about some of your thoughts. I mean, I thought another candidate brought up the fact that maybe we can adopt what Atlanta, uh, Del Rey did with a northbound and southbound using Dixie Highway and Federal Highway, right? Mm -hmm. Using that through downtown. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking that some of these options can be? That could be a viable option. The expansion of Dixie Highway as an alternative uh, road to, uh, to Federal Highway as, as the downtown area continues to increase. Uh, those, are, those are important, but that's all north-south traffic. It's east-west traffic, but that has been more problematic. Okay. And uh, the Glades Road coming uh, east in the morning. Uh, I believe we have 79,000 people move in the, work in the city of Boca Raton. 69,000 live outside the city of Boca Raton. So we have a huge influx of people that are coming into the city. And it's very evident. Uh, but actually, we are much better off than Broward. Broward never planned for east-west traffic. And 595, the only east-west main artery, is always just bumper to bumper the entire time when they built Weston and built those sure. communities. That is an example of planning that was not necessarily thought through at the best level. Right. So what advice can you give to our 
the listeners that want to go out and they're researching this campaign, the campaigns, and looking at who they should be voting for for this upcoming election, what advice can you give our listeners? Today? I absolutely encourage them, first of all, to vote, but make it an educated vote. Don't just vote for somebody because your neighbor said this guy, this, and so forth. Take a look at the issues. Look at the pe things that will impact this city. Take a look at the people whose values are aligned with yours and aligned with the future of the city and cast that vote. And if you can, work for that candidate. Make the help that candidate because it's an important, critical decision who becomes the, who becomes the uh, role, plays a major role in the governance of the city of Boca Raton. Thank you, Armand. I appreciate you coming on, as always. We always, look forward to having you the next time. Always a pleasure, Pete. Thanks. All right. Thank you for joining us at the Book of Voice. We look forward to seeing you the next time, and look forward to seeing you on Fact or Fiction Friday.